With our market seeing such crazy increases over the last year, were there some neighborhoods that didn't increase? Well, I'm gonna spoil it for you and say yes, there were. So today we're talking about the best and the worst neighborhoods in Calgary from Q2 this year compared to last year. And what does it look like? Where are they located? Should you buy there? Should you not? Let's get going. So we created a map of all the 10 worst and 10 best neighborhoods in Calgary with links to you know, all of the homes that are available for sale there. So I'm gonna go through and talk about five of the 10 that are on that map for the best neighborhoods. So in fifth spot, we've got a community called Forest Heights. Now, Forest Heights is in the southeast, east, northeast part of the city, and it has homes that were built between the 1960s and the 1980s. 38% of all the homes that were active or sold in the last six months were detached homes. So there's definitely a lot of condos and townhomes and also semi-detached properties in that area as well. The median square feet there is about 1,045. Now in fourth spot is Pembroke Meadows. This is also right close to Forest Heights or Forest Lawn is right there as well. Homes built between 1960 and the late 70s with some condos being built in the last 10 years. Now 49% of the homes there that were active and sold were detached properties. And the median square foot was about a thousand square feet. Now in third spot is another community right in that same area called Southview. So it has homes between actually 1940s and late 1960s. Now 100%, 100% of the homes in this area were detached properties. So there's no condos or anything. So the square footage is a little bit bigger for the median number, which is 1,063. Now, second spot is a community that's not in the east part of the city. It's actually down in the southwest. It's called Lincoln Park. I tried so hard and got so far. Now, Lincoln Park was built between 1990s and early 2000s, and 100% of all the properties in there that have sold or are active are all condos or townhomes. They have condo fees attached to them. So that might give you a hint why they're in this list. Now the first spot is red carpet, which you go back over to the east side of the city and there 1999 to early 2000s is when you're gonna find properties being built and 0% of those homes are detached. They're all also condos and their median square feet is 834 square feet. So what I find very interesting about this list in particular is that the first 10 neighborhoods that have the highest percentage of increases were between 21 to 31% increases. So red carpet was a 31% increase, Lincoln Park 25, Southview 24, Penbrook 24, and Forest Heights 22. What's really interesting is the fact that there was only two neighborhoods Rosemont and Lincoln Park that were not a part of the Northeast East zones. Those areas have really seen a huge growth in their prices. The average price for the top 10 neighborhoods of the best of the fastest areas was $467,000. Now, the worst areas, it's a lot higher in their average price. So what do those look like? So before we talk about the worst neighborhoods, I wanna share all the quadrant stats. We're gonna list them out so you can see exactly what they look like and where they are. So in the number one, the fastest growing area is east. So the whole east quadrant went up 21%. Northeast went up 16%. Northwest went up 11%. South went 11%. Southeast was 10%. North was 10%, West 9%, and city center actually only went up 4% year over year. I do do real estate. <laughs> hey! <laughs> and so the crazy part about that is the city of Calgary, the whole thing went up 9%. So how can there be some areas that went down? So we're talking about the worst neighborhoods in Calgary from Q2 this year to last year. What happened? Well, the top 10, I guess, worst 10 neighborhoods, their average price was actually 695. So that shows you there was a 200 or so thousand dollar difference between the top of the list and the bottom of the list from the top 10 to worst 10. So what are those worst five? Well, in fifth spot, we have got Garrison Green. Now Garrison Green, wonderful little community, uh, and it saw a negative 2% drop. 
Well, they have homes built there between the mid 2000s and newer and 18% of the last six months of sales uh, or active properties were detached properties. And the median square feet there was about 872 square feet. Now in fourth spot, we have got Kelvin Grove. Kelvin Grove saw a negative 3% drop. It has homes that were built between 1960s and newer, and 45% of those homes that are sold or active over the last six months were detached properties. So it's about half and half. And the median square feet is 1,164, which kind of shows there are some more detached properties there. So in third spot, we've got a community called Windsor Park. Another great community, but it had homes that were built between 1950s and new, and it saw a 4% drop in its benchmark prices from Q2 this year to Q2 last year. And only 3% of the homes there in the last six months or actives were detached properties. So there's a ton of properties that have condo fees in it. Now in second spot is a community called Cliff Bungalow. Some homes in there from 1910, 1912 and newer and 19% of the homes there uh, were detached and all the rest had condo fees but they saw a 13% drop in their benchmark price and number one this is where we are today. We are in Rideau Park. Rideau Park is downtown, it is central, and it has dropped 16% year over year for its benchmark pricing. It had 18% of the actives and sold over the last six months were detached properties. Homes built between 1911 to 1920, and median square footage was about 972 square feet. So many of these neighborhoods on this top 10 list are luxury neighborhoods. And it's kind of shocking because they haven't increased like everything else. However, if that's what you're looking for, you may want to check out these luxury neighborhoods that are all around Calgary. So go check it out and we'll see you in that video.